God, I just want to uh, come to you, Lord, and I pray that um, you really be upon us, God. Uh, may your spirit uh, empower us uh, to be here, empower us to be here, uh, both not only just physically, but also just empower us to be here uh, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Help us to listen, God, to what you have to say to us. Help us to uh, be able to communicate what you're, what you're, how you're working through us. And I pray that um, we can just laser focus on what you have uh, to say to us tonight and how you're going to move through all of us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. Um, so we're going to be on page 14 of your notes. Page 14 of your notes. You're going to see a little... Uh, a diagram of a uh, silhouette of a person and a diagram of a person. So, what I'm, what I'm going to do is we're today we're talking about uh, the topic of character defined through the spirit. Character defined through the spirit. So, if, if you've been tracking with us uh, since we've been started, we looked at the first week about what does it look like to live a life uh, with the Holy Spirit. What does it look like to have the Holy Spirit uh, be a part of us as uh, believers? Okay? And then um, we too, we looked at well, what else, what are the ways that the Holy Spirit help us? And we looked at what does it mean for the Holy Spirit to help us read the Bible? Right? When when scriptures uh, come alive, right? Because the Holy Spirit's inspiration, the author of scripture, and illumination gives us the eyes of scripture. And then lastly, we looked at what does it look like to pray with the Holy Spirit? Right? How can our prayer lives radically change if we have the Holy Spirit with us? And then today we're looking at character. Um, how, how would someone? How would you guys define character? Actually, if someone actually just define the word character. How would you define it? Anybody? Yeah. I remember Bill Hybels wrote a book. It was called um, "Who You Are When No One's Looking." Yeah. Like that, that's that's what you're saying. Character. Yeah. Good. So I want to go through a little exercise, and I don't want you to don't don't overthink this or over spiritualize it. Okay, don't overthink it or spiritualize it. We're just gonna do a quick uh, answer. I'm gonna put some words on the screen, and then you're gonna write these words in these little boxes. Okay, so you have one, two, three, you have nine little boxes here. Okay, and, and I don't care what order you go through. You can go you can do any box, but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna just put a put a word out, and you want I want you to describe. How you see that play out in everyday life. Okay? See words, how it play out in everyday life. Don't don't overthink it, don't over it, just something quick, a simple, practical, something you would see anybody do in any circumstance. Got it? Alright? You right. clear? Right. right down, yeah. So there's nine boxes, so you see nine words. I don't care what order you go through, just pick one of these boxes to so write the word down and, and practical examples. Got it? So each box you're gonna have a word, and then you're gonna have just some practical examples of how that word is played out, right? Alright, so first word. Uh, love. Give, give me some examples of just casual, everyday. How do you see love being played out in every, everyday? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Things uh, like a, giving a hug or giving a kiss. Giving a hug, giving a kiss? Okay, good. Anyone else? Caring. Caring for somebody, okay. Uh, give, give me a specific example of how you care. Open the door for him. Open the door for someone. Okay. All right. Give them money. Okay. Next word. <laughs> joy. Next word is joy. Next word is joy. We're going to move quickly through these because the, the ten of us have spent a lot of time on this, but just to be quick on this. Uh, joy. Anybody? Uh, how, how do you see uh, joy being played out uh, every day? Yes, Steve. Smiling. Smiling. Yeah, smiling. And what else was the difference besides joy? It's good, Steve. Anyone else? All right, so joy, smiling. All right, how do you uh, see uh, peace uh, being played out in everyday life? How would you just see peace going being played out? Calmness. Calmness? Yeah, give me a specific example of that, of being, don't, don't, don't describe something, give me an actual, what would it be? Person is unraveled by events around them. Person is unraveled, okay, good. Any other, any other, and that was a, a peace being played out? Um, yeah. Like if there's an emergency situation, Okay. We, can, we can think clearly in it. Yeah. They're not crazy with the chaos. 
Okay, good. They sleep well. <laughs> Next word is patience. Patience. Now, uh, how do how does one see patience being played out uh, every day? Yeah. Children's being children being I mean mothers being patient with their children. Mother being patient with their children. Yeah, right. Uh, mothers are always patient with their children. Drivers being patient. Drivers being patient. Yeah, driver, <coughs> drivers being patient as well. Next word is uh, kindness. Kindness. Give me examples of uh, how you see kindness played out. Yeah. Giving money to the uh, homeless. Giving money to the homeless. It's kindness. Yeah. And what else? Letting, yeah. somebody, letting somebody go ahead of you in the grocery line. Letting someone go ahead of you in the grocery line. That's kindness. Yeah. What about uh, goodness? Well, how do you? It's, it's a little bit more uh, harder. But how, but how would you define? Or how would you uh, tell me how goodness is played out? Selflessness. Okay, but a specific example of, of, of someone. Uh, some of the ones I already mentioned. Let someone else go before you. You let someone through do that. You help them do something. No return expected. Okay. Or if you get the wrong change. Yeah. At the store, and you're like, mm, I got the wrong change. Like, too yeah. much. I've, I've done that. Before. Uh, good. Give it back, yeah. Good. Uh, faithfulness. Faithfulness. How would you see uh, faithfulness played out? Keeping your word. Keeping your word. Yeah, good. Keeping your word. And in all four sessions. Tail four sessions, yeah. 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 You can't eat it, yeah. Showing up to practice. You Showing up to practice. Like yeah. Just fine. Uh, gentleness. How would you see uh, gentleness being played out? Hugging somebody? Hugging somebody, yeah. What did you say? Kissing a crying baby. Kissing a crying baby, yeah. Gentleness. The way your tone of voice. Tone of voice. Okay, good. Self control. Self control. What do you think? Yep. Eating one Oreo, not the whole box. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Woohoo! Anyone else? Self control. Not responding to someone's anger. Not responding to someone's anger. Okay, good, good. Uh, if you, if you, if you, uh, can't tell. This is uh, going to lead us towards um, our, our talk about character defined in the spirit. Now, at, at the top of your page 14, top page 14, you see uh, a blank space in Christ. See that? Yeah. Uh, at, at, the, at, the, at the top of it, um, I want you to write the word without Christ. Without Christ. Right? Without Christ. Without Christ. And in the middle of the person, on the silhouette, on the person's shirt or body, Right, the person's shirt. Right, write down the words uh, self or flesh. Self, S E L F, or the flesh. Self or the flesh. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of we're, 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 this this is all tonight. It's all gonna kind of uh, be a linear a progression, right, from the thought process beginning to the end. Now, and, and so you have this person, right? And all these things that we named, right? All these qualities, uh, we, can, we, we uh, native examples of what love is, of joy is, of peace, right? Uh, all these can actually be accomplished, right? On your own, right? With, like, you, the, people, the things you described, there are, there are people who are without Christ um, and who can do these, right? The people who aren't Christians who can do these. And... and what, what we miss about the fruit of the Spirit is that the reality of uh, these traits that we're going to read soon in Galatians 5 is that these fruits of the Spirit are not obtainable by ourselves at all. That the only way they become really fruits of the Spirit is through the Holy Spirit. Ruthie, you question? Yeah, I, I couldn't hear what you said. That you just repeated the fruit yep. of the Spirit. So the biggest problem is on the bottom. So the biggest problem with the person above in the, in the thing, and this is on your notes, bottom of page uh, 14, is that the the big problem with the person above is that the actions are based on circumstances and rewind the inner self to accomplish it. See, the person without Christ, the person without Christ 
can actually do the things of, of joy, of love, of peace, and, and can, can actually accomplish things, accomplish these things. But the biggest problem with the person, what they're ultimately going to find, is that without Christ, these actions of faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, are based purely on circumstance and rely on the inner self to accomplish it. And what we're, what you're going to, what we're going to find is, right, eventually, that's not going to work. Right? Eventually, that's going to run out. Okay? Eventually, if you rely on your inner self and your uh, flesh to accomplish the task of the fruit of the Spirit, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to win. Right? You are simply not going to succeed because they're based on circumstances, right? I have, uh, without Christ, somebody could be uh, patient, but only if everything else is going well. Somebody can show joy only if they're having a, uh, a good day. Someone can show self-control, but only in the certain uh, circumstances. Open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, please. Galatians 5. That's going to be our kickoff for Galatians 5. Galatians 5, uh, verse 20 to 23. We're going to go through a lot of few verses today. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we have a lot to cover, so we're going to go quickly through these, and uh, we probably won't be able to cover everything, but we're going to try to get through the gist of, of this. But Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Here's what it says. Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, or patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. If you've been a Christian for any time, right, these are uh, th it's a very popular verse, right? People love this verse because uh, right, who wouldn't want to have love and joy and peace and patience in their life, right? I mean, in 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 fact, right? You know, you, there's there's constantly like um, uh, artwork, right? There's artwork. Um, people, you, you guys probably have to say in your house, right? Some, some, you have some sort of thing. And this is a, it's a great kind of uh, motto and mantra to live by, right? Having the fruits of the Spirit there. But what we're going to find, and, and this is the rest we're trying to get to, is, okay, the, the, oftentimes the way we look at the fruit of the Spirit is incorrect and wrong. See, we have these kind of posters, posters up, and we have these decorations in our house, and we have these uh, t-shirts, and a lot of times as Christians, we look at the fruit of the Spirit as qualities we need to obtain. A lot of people look at these fruits of the Spirit as qualities I need to shoot for, qualities I need to strive for, qualities I need to become. But that passage is actually not about what you need to become and what you need to accomplish. That passage is about how the Holy Spirit works in you so you can show that in your life. See, this passage isn't about what you need to do in your life to be this. This passage is about how the Holy Spirit is working in you so this shows up. See, too many times we use this as a checklist, right? And things that I gotta, I gotta be more peaceful, I gotta be more patient, I gotta be more kind. But the reality is, you're at that person on page 14. If you rewind your inner self, guess what? This is all going to crumble based on circumstance and your human flesh. Okay? Turn to page 15. Turn to page 15 and open your mouth John chapter 15. John chapter 15. So page 15, John 15. Thanks, sir. Page 15 and John 15. We're, 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 we're trying to get a section about abiding in Jesus. Abiding in Jesus. John 15, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Verses 1 through 8. Can I get a brave volunteer to read all uh, 8 verses, 1 through 8? Anybody want to be brave and read all 8 verses for me? Yep. I'll read it. Yep. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that uh, does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Thank you. So, so what do you guys get out of this passage? What's the, what's the uh, gist of this passage that you pull away from? We're going to be pruned. We're going to be pruned. We're not standing in order to be thrown in any actions. Yeah. So Jesus said, right, that his goal, right, is for you to be what? More fruitful. Verse 2. And then verse 8. Say, that his followers is that what? That you bear what? Much fruit. Okay? You bear much fruit. That you show. Uh, evidences of Christ in you. We just read a passage, right, about the fruits of the Spirit. And Jesus said that the only way that you can have fruit in your life is to abide in me. So we talk about abiding in Jesus, right? Jesus' command, uh, top of page 15 of the news, Jesus' command to every believer is this, to abide in me. That's his command. Abide in me or remain in me. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So what, what he's saying is that uh, apart from me, you can't live your life the way your life was intended for. See, uh, apart from me, you can't have the true godly joy that you need to have to show people you're a Christ follower. And apart from me, Jesus said, you can't have the true patience you need to be uh, a husband. Or apart from me, you can't have the self-control uh, you need to be a mother. See, you just said, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. See, when we abide in Christ, right? When we are obedient or dependent on Him, the Holy Spirit works in our lives, creating the fruits of the Spirit. When we are abiding in Christ, what happens is we are obedient and dependent on Him. And when Jesus said that, when you remain in me, you're going to see fruit. And that is the Holy Spirit working in our lives, creating the fruits of the Spirit we read in Galatians 5. See, we are meant to have the closest, most intimate relationship with Christ, with nothing coming between us. That's your spiritual discipline, that's your quiet time, that's your devotion, your reading, your scripture, that, that's coming together uh, as a body of Christ. See, see, if we are not instantly mature people, when you come to Jesus... You are not instantly mature. It's a growing process. It's a pruning process. And that is, that is the part where we, as we are abiding in Jesus, He makes us dependent on Him, and the Holy Spirit can work in our lives. Open your Bibles in Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 15 to 20. Matthew 7, verse 15 to 20. Here's what it says. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs or thistles? Like with every good tree bears good fruit. Well, look at this. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Pretty hard words, right, by, by, by Christ. But Jesus is saying that, listen, if you are a good tree, is going to come, a good fruit is going to come from good trees. 
bad fruit is going to be fruit bad trees. What he's saying is, uh, your life, right, is going to show your connection to Christ. Right? How you exhibit your life is going to show your uh, life in Christ. Now, Paul wrote this passage in Galatians, you know, we think Galatians 5. And when Paul wrote this passage in Galatians 5, right, he was writing to uh, a letter to the church in Galatia. Okay, so the book of Galatians is a letter to the church in Galatia. And it's important to understand the context of the church in Galatia because that will give us understanding um, what was going on. Okay? So the Apostle Paul, he wrote, to the, he wrote the book of Galatians to the church in Galatia, and he wrote this primarily because they were struggling right, to achieve righteousness on their own. Paul wrote to, to the church in Galatia because they were struggling to achieve righteousness on their own instead of accepting it as God's free gift. Right? Because they were trying to do things on their own. It was hard for them to comprehend that God's gift was free in Jesus Christ. It was hard for them to comprehend that through Jesus Christ, it was all paid for. That their debt was paid on the cross. See, in Galatia, not everyone shared Paul's understanding of God's grace in Jesus. At the time, there were some Jewish Christians, and they were trying to impose... Jewish customs on people who were recently converted to Christianity. Right? There are some Jewish Christians who are trying to impose customs on people who were converted to Christianity. The problem was not these customs were Jewish, but the problem was that these customs were not part of the saving gospel. And, 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 and these people in Galatia were adding rules on top of what it meant to be a Christian. And, 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 and people were struggling to achieve righteousness because they felt they had to follow these rules except, instead of accepting God's free gift. See, no customs, no culture, no worldview should be mixed in with the pure saving gospel of Jesus. Paul's entire letter to the church in Galatia is refuting the false teachings of works done by the flesh. His whole passage of, of, of reason of, of writing Galatia, in Galatians is to refute that Work is done by the flesh. What he wanted to do is that work is done by the Spirit. See, their culture was a complement of the flesh. Yes? Uh, I'm just wondering, like even back then, because this is works, yeah. okay, this is works, did they ever ask the question that we ask today? How many, how, at what point, how many works do I have to do to be righteous? I mean, that... That, to me, should be like the question throughout all the ages. Yeah. And, and I never really saw it in terms of, you know, people asking that question that understood Christianity. Yeah. Okay? But but were they asking that question even back then? Like, how many, you know, well, how many I mean, righteous? Well, I mean, the ones who were committed Christians understood that. Yeah. Right? But, but the ones who were part of the custom and followed the law... They did not. You know, they, 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 they went, they went. But that's who you would ask the question to. You know, you'd ask the one who's trying to follow the law. Yeah. So, they, so, so there was these the, the the Pharisees and the Sadducees and people in the temples. They were telling them the wrong information. They were saying that there are additional rules, right, okay. on top of what it means to be a Christian. You know, we we looked at uh, a couple weeks ago. We looked at uh, the scriptures, right, and we talked about that. This is the 500th year of the Reformation. And the Reformation is when the theologian Martin Luther broke from the Catholic Church because he realized that, <coughs> hey, uh, the Catholic they tell me, the Catholic Church tell me, you need to do this, you need to do that, and only the priest can talk to, to God. And he realized, when I read the Bible, it's not like that, right? It's 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 different. See, the law was a good for was was good for ethics for living, it was a good ethic for living, right? A good life. But itself could not save anyone. So the law, what they're saying, it was good for ethics and, and to live a good life. But but you cannot save them but anybody. And in this culture, they had they were promoting a confidence of the flesh. But Paul said that our confidence is already by the spirit. Greek philosophers said a wise person needs no external law, but Paul says that those who are led by the spirit are not under the law. Now it's important to understand, kind of what God gave people the law in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, God gave people the law, and the law in the Old Testament, yeah, just to be clear, the law in the Old Testament is God's word. 
right? The law of the Old Testament is God's word in the Old Testament. So you, you see on page 16, page 16, okay? So this, this is on top of page 16. Okay, so God gave people the law. But here's what happened when God gave people the law. Israel, this is the Old Testament, repeatedly struggled to keep the law. Okay? So God gave people his commandments in the Old Testament. And guess what happened? People constantly struggled to keep the law, right? Even, even when God, God people would, he was freed from slavery, right? And 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 uh, he was about to uh, give them the Ten Commandments, and yet they built this golden calf, they were not satisfied with God. So God gave people the law in the Old Testament, but people in Israel specifically struggled with keeping the law. But God knew that the only way they could keep the law it was written on their hearts. Right? He, he mentioned the law in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, 14 times both. It can't be written on their hearts. I don't know, I'm not sure they knew what that meant at the time, but but God did, did, it had to be written on their hearts. But because of that, in, in Jeremiah, God promised a new covenant that would accomplish that. And God in Jeremiah, God said that I'm gonna send a new covenant to write this on your heart. And then finally in Ezekiel, he moved to the Old Testament, uh, God would cleanse the people's spirits and place his spirit with them. See, that's not my notes. Page 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So the spirit transformed us to live God's way. See, the Old Testament law dealt with people on the outside, but when Jesus comes in the New Testament, he demands more than just the outside appearance. He demands our hearts to be transformed. So God gave people the law. They couldn't keep the law right in their hearts. And that's the whole part of the inner self, right? That if you just rely on yourself and your flesh, as humans, we're not going to be able to keep God's law. But New Testament comes. God gave us the Holy Spirit. And why? Because the Spirit transforms the way we live. Jesus came to save us and give us the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus' mission was to change us on the inside so that we would want to do what is right. See, rules have their place, okay? Rules have their place, and, and boundaries have their place for a while. But the reality is, it is Christ living in us that transforms us. So the Spirit transforms the way we live. Believers are led by the Spirit to fulfill the moral principles of the law because why? The law is written on their hearts through what? Through God giving the Holy Spirit. And more importantly, Jesus demands that our hearts be changed from the inside out. See, one can't be legalistic and walk in the Spirit at the same time. Legalistic religion depends on the flesh, and spiritual religion depends on God's power and grace. So let me take a pause here. So we started this talk tonight about character defined in the Spirit. Right? Character defined. What that means is, how do I live my life? How I live my life is, is important, right? How your character is, is critical. How your character is, depend, it connects to how your faith is, okay? And, and we see through the Old Testament that as hard as people try, they cannot have the law written on their hearts. It was so hard for them to accomplish it because it was purely on their inner self. Jesus comes in and says, hey, it's not about the outside, it's not about the rules, it's about the inside. Because why? If you rely too much on the rules and the outside, eventually, through circumstances, it's not going to last. But the reason we have the Holy Spirit to transform us is because the only way Jesus knows is for us to be really, truly changed is if your heart is radically transformed. Right? So open your Bible to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verse 16 through 26.
Galatians 5, uh, verse 16 to 26. We're going to go through um, all this. So please follow along. So this is, this is Paul. So we're talking to the church in Galatia. And he says this. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So what he's saying is, to the church in Galatia, right? You guys are failing because you're so focused on keeping rules and doing it yourself and going to the flesh. And what he's saying to them, if you walk by the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, guess what? You're not going to gratify your desires and your flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. He's saying, hey, you know what? Uh, what your flesh wants, your sinful self, it's different than what the Holy Spirit wants. Right? That, that's different than what the Holy Spirit wants. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit wants all that is good for me, but my flesh constantly wants to satisfy what? My desires. Okay? The flesh wants to, see, your flesh wants to satisfy one person. It's you. Your flesh is all about you. right? What you're feeling, how you're doing, what you're going through. But what but, but Paul's saying is, but the flesh is contrary to the Spirit. Verse 17, they are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Talk about the law, and then they wanted extra rules in Galatia. And Paul's saying in verse 18, if the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you, guess what? You're, gonna, you're not going to need the law. <coughs> You're not, you're not going to need the rules, the extra layers of rules, because because the, the the Pharisees, right, have actually good intentions. In, 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 if you look at it in one way, right, they wanted to they wanted to protect people. <coughs> so the Pharisees they had Christianity, right, and they built a little fence as a one they have a rule. Because why? They wanted to protect people, and then they built another rule, another fence, another fence. And eventually, it's all these rules that people had to follow. And, and, and the rule was actually in somewhat of a good intention because they wanted to protect people from screwing up. But when we look at Jesus Christ, the rules aren't what's going to save us, right? It's, it, is, it is with Christ that's going to save us. And, and what Paul is saying is, if you have the Spirit, guess what? You're not going to be under the flesh, and you don't need to be under the law, because the Spirit's going to guide your character on how you live. Verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live by this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right? Pretty strong words from, from, from here, right? That, that, that if you're part of the flesh, they're obvious, Paul says, right? Because the flesh, ourselves, our inner self, it satisfies one person, it satisfies us. It's all about us, right? It's all about things that, that uh, sexual morality, the impurities, right? The rage, the ambition, these are all things that satisfy the self. But what Paul is saying is, but what? The fruit of the Spirit right, is love, joy, <coughs> peace, <coughs> patience, kindness, goodness, faith, and gentleness, self control. Against certain things, there's no law. Those who belong to Christ have been crucified with the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Okay? So. So Paul kind of lays out what it means to walk in the Spirit. And the most important thing to know is that the goals of the Spirit and the flesh are mutually exclusive. The goals of the Spirit and the flesh are mutually exclusive. See, the, the, the works of the flesh are all matters of sin. See, instead of dependence on the fleshly works, Paul called believers to what? Produce the fruit of the Spirit. We read earlier that Jesus said that what you would know my uh, believers by what by their fruit, right? You would know us by our fruit. The Bible says that once you are in Christ, you belong to the Spirit and not the flesh. So what? Live like it. Paul said, "Listen, if you're part of Christ, live by the Spirit. Keep walking with the Spirit." 
See, when the fruit of the Spirit is not evident in our lives, we must look to see if our, our flesh is preventing the Holy Spirit to move. I'll say that again. If we see the fruit of the Spirit and evidence of the fruit of the Spirit not evident in our lives, then we must look at our flesh to see what is preventing the Holy Spirit from moving. That if, 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 if you come to a point in your day and you realize, wow, I was really not patient with that person. I'm going to go back and see what in my life have I not let the Holy Spirit get a hold of. Or i, I got to go back and say, how have I not been abiding in Jesus? Or maybe you don't have the joy in your life. And there's no joy that comes out. And there's no joy that is to others. What you need to realize, go back to and say, all right, is there a block in my life that doesn't allow the Holy Spirit to control that part of my life? Is there a block in my life that doesn't allow me to control that part of my life with joy? Or i got to go back right, and see, have I been abiding in Christ? Because when, they're, when they don't exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in my life, when I don't exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in my life, what has to happen is we need to go look back at our connection to the Spirit and our connection to Christ. So, it, so let's kind of go with our, with our linear trend here and, and, and catch up where we're at. Okay? So, God gave the people of the Old Testament the law. And he said, follow the law. But the Israelites struggled to go back to keep the law. But he made these promises. Hey, that the only way that you're going to keep the law is to bring it on your hearts. Right? And, and then the only way to bring it on your heart is if it was implanted to you by God's Spirit. And then Jesus comes and says, listen, it's not about the rules, it's not about the outside, it's about the inside of your inner heart. And then Jesus said, that if, as a Christian, you need to abide in me and remain in me, so that what? So that you can have good fruit. Jesus also said that you know my disciples by their fruit. And then Paul writes in Galatians, hey, the works of the flesh look like this. This is what it looks like to have flesh, and, and, and it doesn't connect with the Spirit. But if you have the Spirit, this is what it looks like. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness. And what Paul is saying is, this is what it looks like to be a Christian. This is what it looks like to be a Christian. That it is not my own works. Because the reality is, right, in order for me... To love my wife that way God loves me to love, I can't do it on my human self because I'm going to fail. The only way for me to love my wife the way God loves me to love her is through the Holy Spirit working through me. Right? The only way that I'm going to have gentleness of love the people around me is not because of me, because I go back and forth and by, the, by, the, uh, by the day, right? But it's through the Holy Spirit that lives in me right? that shows that out. Go to page 17. 17. You can see another silhouette here. Uh, turn to Matthew 22, please. Matthew 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40. It's in your notes, but I'll learn to copy it as well. Trend, right? They're, 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 at, they're saying, hey, what is the one thing I need to do to get, to get to heaven? Right? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, right? And the prophets hang on these two commandments. Alright? So, uh, on the top of your page, you see number 1, 2, and 3 on page 17. So, the reality of, of life falls into three categories, right? It's God, others, and self, right? God, others, and self. Jesus said that, that, that life is simple, right? Life is just simple. Love God, love your heart, soul, and mind, right? And love your neighbor as yourself, right? 
So it it it, it is in that order: God, others, and self. On the top of your page seventeen, you see a blank word with about um, uh, blank Christ. I want you to write with Christ, with Christ, with Christ. So. So when we started the exercise, your silhouette had it on the top of the page without Christ. Now this person is with Christ. And when somebody is with Christ, the fruits of the Spirit are evident in our lives. Right? The fruit of the Spirit are evident in our lives. So in the middle of the person, the little person in the shirt, in the middle of the person, write down the word Holy Spirit. In the middle of that person on page 17, write down the word Holy Spirit. Because the only way we can truly display these godly fruits of the Spirit is through the Holy Spirit with us, with Christ. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a kind of different way of looking at how these fruits of the Spirit connect with Jesus' teaching about how to live our lives. All right? So, the first section, you see the word upward? Right? You see the upward? Mm -hmm. So, upward is... Our relationship with God. So you want to think about the, the whole thing working through us, right? That uh, love, joy, and peace, number one, two, three, love, joy, and peace connect with our relationship with God. There's, there's sort of upwards uh, kind of traits that, that how to love God, right? To have the joy in our lives. They are, our, our relationship with God is the love, joy, and peace. Then, then there's also a section called outward, right? And you can the outward is you said to love others than yourself. And you want think about these qualities. These are qualities that connect with other people, right? Patience, kindness, goodness. These are these are qualities that demonstrate my relationship with others. So this is just a different way to kind of look at it. And if you look at Upward with our relationship with God, and outward uh, our relationship to others, that, that the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us with patience, kindness, and gentleness. <laughs> this, this think about as Christians, right? If we had godly patience and kindness and gentleness to everyone around us, it's a game changer, right? And that, that's total contrary to the world today, that's total contrary to society today. So Jesus said to love God, right? With love God, first of all, your heart, mind, and soul. Love God, number one. And love others, right? It's the second commandment. But he said also to love others as yourself. There's upward, inward, outward, and then inward. Inward is our relationship with ourselves. It's faithfulness, gentleness, and our self-control. These three clusters of the fruit of the Spirit are all related to other and to characterize our life. And all of us will, will character our lives when we are when we abide in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to do work in us. Alright? Let me give you some, uh, uh, page 18, let me give you some uh, verses uh, that talk about these things. I'm just going to give you the verses of the different fruits of the Spirit. That way you can write them down and look them up uh, on yourself. All right, so page 18. Page 18. So uh, for love, for love, uh, write down this passage, uh, John 13, 35. Under love, write down John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Also for love, write down 1 John 3, 18. 1 John 3.18. 1 John 3.18. For, for joy. For joy. Write down this passage. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.6. 1 Thessalonians 1.6. Frank, you may get your 50 verses here. I get it. It's inside there. I got extras here. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 1.6. Uh, okay. Also for joy. You can write down Nehemiah 8.10. Nehemiah 8.10. Right? That's for joy. For peace. For peace. Write down uh, Romans 8.6. For peace. Romans 
6, Romans 8, 6. Also write down for peace, John 14, 27. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Also for peace, also for peace, write down Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. For patience, for patience, write down James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. For kindness, for kindness, write down uh, 2 Corinthians 10.1. 2 Corinthians 10.1. 2 Corinthians 10.1. For goodness, for goodness, write down Ephesians 5.9. Goodness, Ephesians 5.9. Ephesians 5.9 is for goodness. For faithfulness, faithfulness, write down James 1.25. James 1.25 for faithfulness. For gentleness, write down Matthew 5.5. 5. Matthew 5.5. 5. Matthew 5.5 5 for gentleness. Finally, for self-control, for self-control, Write down Romans 8.5, Romans 8.5, Romans 8.5, but also write down 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 6. You have Romans 8.5 for self-control, but also 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. So, let, let, let's go back to our premise that we started this class. Of tonight's class, right? The, the, the premise was this. The premise is how can I live my life as a true Christian? How can I actually demonstrate what it means to be a Christian in this world? And for some of us, we try so hard and we try hard and hard, right, to accomplish uh, those fruits of the Spirit and to make sure that we're doing this and we try so hard do these things, to, to have the self-control, right, to have the patience, to have the peace in our lives. And when it comes to the end of the day, right, with our human self, that can only go for so long until we fail. Okay? But the, what Jesus gives us of a fantastic promise is Jesus promises this, that you don't have to do it. Right? It's not by yourself. Right, that's the whole essence of the gospel. You cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself. You can't do enough good things in your life to save yourself. It's the point of the gospel. And the beauty is that I don't do anything because Christ did it for me, that he died on the cross for my sins, because I cannot save myself. In life, if you want to have the godly character that God desires you to have, you can't do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. And it's the Holy Spirit living through us that demonstrates that fruit. So when we look at that passage in Galatians 5, it's not a thing uh, was to obtain. It's the list to measure ourselves by of how the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. So you read, I, you know, we can routinely go to our go, go through this list and say, all right, how am I showing love to people? How, how is faithfulness coming through me? How is, how is gentleness coming through me? Because here is the big indicator that we are not really connected to Christ or abiding in Christ or not letting the Holy Spirit work through us. It's if, 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 if these qualities are not exuberating through my life and I see the flesh being in front of me, if I see the works of the flesh controlling me, controlling my mind, controlling my decisions, controlling what I do, then I gotta come back and be like, all right, Holy Spirit, what part of my life don't you have? Or I gotta go back and say, Jesus, where am I missing the mark between us? How am I not have I how am I not been connecting? 
Because, get this, the way Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, about the Holy Spirit to be our counselor, our advocate, our, our helper, the way he did that, it actually makes life really easy as long as we're, he said, as long as you're abiding in me, as long as you're remaining in me, that's what, you're going to show good fruit. So, so when I go through these things, right, that if I'm with God, I'm going to show love. I want to show joy. I want to show peace. If I'm connected to, to Jesus, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be gentle, right? If the Holy Spirit is truly running my life, I want to show faithfulness. I'm going to show gentleness. And I'm going to show self-control. Turn to page 19. Turn to page 19. And there's, there's actually a couple uh, takeaways that we're going to do uh, today. So first off, I want you to answer the two questions on top of page 19. So spend another five minutes and answer the two questions on top of page 19. All right? We're going to, um, if, you keep, if you're right, still right, uh, hopefully you're able to answer both these questions. We're going to um, come back to uh, your takeaway at, at the end. All right. We're going to go back to the takeaway. So on the bottom of your page, of page uh, 19, we have what we call a personal action plan. A personal action plan. And what this is, is for you to figure out uh, what you want to, how you want to move forward from this class. Because okay? uh, I would not be, I'll be doing you a disservice if I just kind of left you uh, just to take this class and that in, right? Uh, right my, 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 my job is to help you all kind of move to the next step. Right? And uh, too often, you know, we, we, we we, 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 we get all this learning and we, we put all this knowledge, right? But we don't uh, have a tangible way to translate that to move into the next step. Make sense? So it, I think this is really easy uh, when I think about this is a triangle here. This is a triangle on page 19. And the, and, and the center is, right, the premise, the foundation is this. Allowing the Holy Spirit to have more of my life. Right? It's, and, we're not, and we're not making it uh, too complex, but the premise is simply... Right? Allowing the Holy Spirit to have more in our life. Right? That, that, that is all that, that is our prayer, that is our hope, is no matter where you are on your journey, whether you're just starting out or you've been a Christian for a long time, the main premise that I want you to leave with over our past month is let the Holy Spirit have more in my life. Allow the Holy Spirit to have more in my life. Right? That's a simple premise. And, and I think no matter where you are on the spiritual spectrum, right, that, that, that can happen. And I like to think uh, I like to think of it in three ways: uh, head, heart, hand. Head, heart, hand. Right? So head is how am I going to think differently about the Holy Spirit each day? How am I going to think about the Holy Spirit differently each day? Because first off, right, in order for us to have uh, actionable results, okay, it has to start in your mind. It has to start in your head. Think about all right. How am I going to go through each day and think about the Holy Spirit? Right? After everything I learned, right? everything, I know, everything I gained in here, right? that has to be able to change your thinking. That, 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 the idea, the hope of, of having a class is to help your mind, help transform your mind and your thinking. But you, know, it's just, you, just, you just can't end there. Right? Just because you're thinking about the Holy Spirit differently each day, you need to take a step further and you need to go to your heart. And, and the question that you need to go through is this. Am I going to let the Holy Spirit have complete access of my heart and soul? Am I going to let the Holy Spirit have complete access of my heart and soul? So not only do we need to be able to think differently in our mind, but it needs to come down to our heart, and the Holy Spirit needs to have complete access of everything that's going through us. But this can't end there either, right? You just can't have uh, a mental uh, change or a heart change, but you know you actually need to have hands. You need to actually be able to do something. And the, qu the question is that we need to ask ourselves this. Will I be open to the ways the Holy Spirit wants to use me? Because, hey, so you, now you've gained some knowledge, now you're thinking of the Holy Spirit differently, right? And, and, and hopefully for a lot of us, 
right? Throughout this month, the Holy Spirit has touched our heart and, and we give, ha, has changed us. But, but, but the truth of the matter is um, we need to be able to be used by the Spirit in a variety of ways. Right? So the Holy Spirit speaks to us. How, how we serve others, how we serve Him. So what I want you to do, I want you to take another five minutes and I want you to kind of create some actionable steps in, in, in your life, whether it be for the next week, next month, or even the next year, and follow this, this head, heart, hands kind of triangle. And I want you to kind of come up with what are you going to do to impact each of these areas in your life. All right? Do that now for another five minutes, kind of accessing that.
All right, so hopefully uh, you guys were able, were able to uh, kind of come up with some personal action plans that you're going to use to, to take away from this, right? Because the idea is uh, we want the Holy Spirit to be to have more of our lives in order that we need to kind of put pen to paper and carry this out. So what I, what I want to do is I want uh, we're going to do the one takeaways. I'm going to ask you what is your one takeaway, and uh, instead of it could be uh, your one takeaway from tonight's class or your one takeaway from the whole four weeks. Okay, so we we, we do this after every class is what's the takeaway. Uh, that we want to kind of uh, kind of pinpoint ourselves on, okay? Uh, I'll start with uh, Frank. What's your one takeaway from uh, our class time together? One takeaway. Staying connected to the vine. Staying connected to the vine. It's like an umbilical cord. Mm, Christ right. us. Yeah. A flow. Good. Good. Ray, what's your one takeaway from the class? I said that I need to uh, concentrate and work more on the fruits of the Spirit. Concentrate to work right. more well, on the, the things that I'm lacking to kind of benefit. Mm. Okay. Good. Uh, Ron, what's your one takeaway from the class? Um, that the uh, fruits are not independent of each other, um, they're all dependent of each other. Uh, you can't have them, you can't work on them separately, but you must have all of them there for any of them to work. Because mm. if one gives way, then the other ones get annoyed. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Philip, what's your one takeaway? Legalism comes from ourselves. Ah. Good. Good. Ruby? Um, like I said, I focused in on um, the self-control, and um, as I looked at that, I say, like, with self-control, that if I take action first and then pray, after I, I take the action, then I will, um, I want to see um, how did that turn out? And by doing it, you know, with myself first, and then the Holy Spirit after that, how did that turn out? And then ask myself the questions, how did I affect others? Yeah. Because when you, when you put yourself first without praying, then the focus is on you. And so it's, it's really a pride issue at that point. And how did that affect other people? I can look at myself, but the way things turned out in that situation, yeah. you know, how did, it, how did it affect other people, what I did? Mm -hmm. Good. Maria? I said, trying to live up to God's likeness is the best thing I can do in my life. But I need to consistently let the Holy Spirit work in me so that the fruit of the Spirit show up more consistently out of me. Mm -hmm. Virginia, what's your one takeaway? Be with Jesus more and stress less what we're doing for him. Mm -hmm. Good. We'll take away. Save is yours by having the Holy Spirit in me yeah. and the gifts that can come from me. Yeah, I think that led to kind of, um, I think we tend to be doers, right? So we want to do it in our strength yeah. and produce the fruits in our strength. Yeah. So it just changing the perspective that I can't hurry up and do anything, but that um, the fruit is the evidence of if I'm remaining and abiding and trusting and surrendering to him. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, that's good. Thanks, Steve. Submitting to the Holy Spirit to help me do better in my life. Good, good. Thank you, everybody. Last thing, page twenty. Page twenty. Uh, I, I, I love uh, books. I like a lot of books, and uh, I like to give book lists. So on page twenty, the list of we recommend reading. If you ever want to go further on the Holy Spirit, uh, each one is a little different than the other, but they all kind of touch on uh, the Holy Spirit uh, working on our lives. And if you ever wanted to take the next step on that. I, I encourage you to uh, uh, go through those lists. All right? Great. Yeah? There's one book I, um, I, I don't need to leave it off. It's just the, the, there was a book that you had used in the class uh, a couple of years ago, uh, John Olenberg's book, Soul Keeping. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a pretty powerful, powerful book. The way yeah. you the aspect of this dialogue with 
Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's a very good book. And I have to talk because it wasn't really dealing with the Holy Spirit. These are all books that are really centered in the Holy Spirit. John Orwell's soul yeah. community is just about keep taking care of yourself and, or, or and the soul. Yeah, so a little bit about it, yeah. Really through the whole book, right? Yeah. I thought so. So, yeah. Perfect. So, yep. Yeah. Could you recommend one for a starter person? Yeah, yeah. So, great question. So, best book for a starter is uh, Third from the Top. Uh, Francis Chan, Forgotten God. Francis Chan, Forgotten God. He writes in a very easy way. Uh, he talks about um, just the very basics of the Holy Spirit. He basically uh, talks about my first session and kind of just kind of really taking down the whole book. So if you're doing the beginning, uh, Forgotten God is my number one choice of that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. You use that book in another class. I have used that book in another class. Right? I have used it in this one. All right. So, hey, uh, kind of two things need, need, need to happen is uh, I want to pray to end our night, but we have some housekeeping to do after I pray, okay? So, uh, yes, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I had done once, there was um, in one of my Bible studies, um, and it was, it was kind of a powerful thing because it was just a sheet of paper, and on it, it leaves a, um, a blank, yeah. and it says blank in Christ is... And then you fill it in. And it's like you put your name in there. Mm. So it's Ruthie in Christ is patient. Mm. Ruthie in Christ is kind. That's good. And when you see that and you have that, it kind of it, it gives you like a power. You realize yeah. the power that you have now because of, you know, because of, of, of Christ and, um, and, and the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit... So it was. It was really, even though it's so simple, yeah. it just was kind of a good exercise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to pray. Housekeeping notes are: uh, we all want to try to improve uh, how we offer classes here at Grace Fellowship. So we're going to. I want to pray, and I'm going to ask you to take some time. I, I added early intentionally to take some time to fill out this this questionnaire about uh, survey classes, and then after the questionnaire. And we, we need uh, help in putting the chairs away. Chairs we need to go in that room, and the tables we need to go in that room. So a little bit of things, but uh, we pray for us, and then we use the kind of call the survey, and then we do the table and chair the table call. All right. So God, uh, we ask you that uh, you would come upon us, that uh, as we are here today, Lord, I really want all of us to come away with a more uh, power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want us to be able to uh, live right, like those who are abiding in you, Jesus. So I pray that as we walk through our lives, that you would help us identify areas where the Holy Spirit doesn't have control, and Jesus be our guide. And I pray for everyone's action plan here, that uh, you really uh, embed this into their minds and their hearts, and allow them to carry out this action plan so we can just grow and develop and be closer and closer to you. For us in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, please take some time and fill out this survey. Sure. <laughs> Is it true? Take a survey. Be honest. Be transparent. Yeah, it. Don't put your name on it. Just fill them out. Yeah, it was just like a sheet like this. And, and it, it had like you know, a blank. And you put your name. For everyone of us put your name. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Right.